So, the add instruction uh, in this uh, in say AVR uh, processor, so it may be like add RD comma RR, where RD is the destination and source in the register file and RR is the source register in the register file. So, it will be the operation that will uh, happen is that RD will get RD plus RR. So, this is the destination and source and the second register is the other source. So, this way uh, this add instruction may be executed. So, for example, this add R23 comma R11. So, this will be given as a 16 bit code 0, uh, 0 EEB and the bit pattern coding is like this. So, out of that this this uh, 5 bits so 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, So, they will correspond to add instruction. Then next uh, 5 uh, red bits so this uh, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So, they will give the register number 23 uh, as the first operand and then this uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, that is 11. So, that is the second uh, 11, second operand of the register. So, this all RDRR instruction will follow this pattern. So, the, this has got a coding like this. So, this 0 is uh, redundant. So, this 0 is extra nothing is there. So, that is taken as 0. So, all instructions will be coded like this. So, if we are looking into addressing modes, so then uh, there are different modes like we have register direct with 1 and 2 registers. So, we can di directly specify your operand as a register or you can have I O direct. So, you, ca you can have some uh, from the input output port addresses, the data direct, data indirect with pre and data indirect can also be with pre decrement, post increment type of thing and code memory addressing. So, you will see this addressing modes, register direct one register like say increment R16. So, this instruction, so this will increment the R16 register. So, this is a 16 bit instruction. So, in the register file, so R16 is uh, given the uh, number, uh, the corresponding index is D. So, the opcode part will be there and then this D, the, these 4 bits will identify the register on which you want to do the operation. So, this is D. So, in the current register bank, uh, register 16 will be incremented or say clear 22. So, based on that uh, 22, so it will be the destination will be coming. So, this d is the uh, number. So, for this case this d will be 16, for the second instruction d will be 22, for the third instruction d will be 0. So, it will be like that, but 4 bit coding will be sufficient to differentiate between uh, the 16 uh, different uh, registers that we have. Now, you can have register direct with two registers like this add instruction add R6 comma R17. Here uh, we will have this uh, uh, register uh, uh, direct and this uh, this RR and RD. So, both may be there and they can be used for uh, the again we can have two registers uh, mentioned here and the indices stored as part of the instruction. So, this is also a 16 bit coding. So, register direct with uh, two registers. I O indirect. So, you can say that uh, okay, it is uh, in R 16 comma P I N D. So, P I N D it will identify some port number. So, this will be uh, so this uh, so this P will be identifying. So, this is the opcode part which is say in then uh, say R 16. So, this is the register now this is the register number. So, this will be coming to this N and this I O memory. So, this P I N D, so this will as there are 64 I O pins as we have said. So, it is the it, it is a 64 I O locations that we have seen. Uh, so, we have it is uh, from the 60 uh, whatever be the port number we have identified. So, from that port the value will be put into this uh, corresponding register. So, from this particular port the value will come to the register R 16. Similarly, out uh, port C R 16. So, it will output this R 16 value onto port C. So, again that port C will have some address and accordingly it will be selected. Then data direct. So, you can say like uh, the, the STS instruction. So, stored data uh, stored direct to data space. So, here so we have got this opcode which is that STS and this uh, register which register will be acting as the um, source and that value will be going to this destination. So, this uh, LS this this uh, this address 
is a 16 bit address and the 16 bit address will be uh, uh, will be used th that will be part of the instruction and this uh, r16 value will be copied onto that particular address so this is a uh, 2 byte uh, sorry this is a 32 bit instruction so 0 to 32 so uh, so previously we had all 16 bit instruction so this is 32 bit instruction then we have got uh, data indirect so you can uh, there are three registers as you said x y and z and these registers can be used for indirect addressing so you can say like load r16 comma y so wherever y is pointing to y register is pointing to so that locations content will be copied onto r16 register or store z comma r16 so z is another pointer so whatever be the value of r16 so that will be stored into the memory location pointed to by the z register so we have got uh, this x y or z register working like that you also have data indirect with displacement so it is a load with displacement l d d so this is r 16 y plus some constant value 10 so y register with that this 10 value which is coded here will be added okay and that will act as the offset where the value should be written so uh, if this location content is a, uh, uh, is a thousand so with that this zero will be this 10 will be added so it will become 1010 and then that location content will be updated similarly we can have std where we have first we mentioned this um, uh, indirect register plus the offset which is say 0x20 and that value will be so there will be storing the value of register r16 so this way we can have this data indirect with displacement there is another mode data indirect with pre decrement so data indirect with pre decrement uh, here it is ld there is no displacement so there is the ld d part is missing d is not there only ld r16 so it is so in r16 will be loading the value pointed uh, from the memory location pointed to by the z register but before that z will be decremented by 1 so it is pre decrement so z value will be decremented and then <coughs> that uh, address will be used to access the data memory so this is minus z or you can have uh, this pre decrement uh, st minus z r16 so you can decrement uh, before accessing uh, the location and first r16 value will be uh, stored in the memory location pointed to by z minus 1 and simultaneously so z is decremented by 1 so you can have post increment also so it is uh, z plus so the, this uh, z register value will be incremented but the uh, um, previous value of z register will be used to access the memory after that this z, z register content will be incremented by 1 so this is the post increment mode and we can have similarly for storing also we can have post increment stz plus r16 so that way we can have uh, this uh, value stored in um, the um, memory uh, memory location pointed to by z register after that this z, 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 z register content will be updated so we can have this data indirect with post increment so we can we have pre decrement and post increment we don't have post decrement or pre increment so those modes are not there but mm, the pre mm, decrement and post increment these are the two modes that we have with data indirect mode some other interesting instructions like we have got this uh, nop nop do nothing for one cycle then sleep so sleep until reset or interrupted so sleep instruction is there then watchdog reset so as we are discussing while talking about that peak microcontroller so we have got watchdog timer so here also we have got watchdog and there is an instruction by which you can reset that watchdog timer so you can say like wdr watchdog reset that can be used so for the io pins so the, these are general purpose IO ports and each port has three control registers associated with it DDRX, port X and pin X. So the DDR register is the data direction register so it will tell uh, um, uh, to, to, to whether a pin will act as an input pin or an output pin. So it is if it is uh, uh, if it is 0 then it will be an out input pin 
and if the bit is 1 in the DDR register then it will act as output pin. Then the port so it is pin will act as output or it will be a read operation and then uh, the read tweak so we will come to that and there is a pin so there, there is a pin can be the port uh, port identity port input so this register is read only ok. So that way we can have different configurations. Then there are IO pins and packages so 15 programmable IO lines are there so that can be used for input output operation. As far as timers are concerned so it has got 8 bit timer and these timers are uh, wrap around up counter they can be configured as uh, wrap around up counter. So after the overflow so it will be uh, coming down to 0 and from there it will be going and there will be an interrupt controller. So, the, 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 there is an interrupt on the overflow like if the when the uh, timer or the counter overflows then this interrupt will be generated and it can be told the processor can be told that an interrupt has occurred. So, this uh, diagram so this is one pin diagram for this atmega 16 processor. So, you see that you can have a number of ports like PA0 to PA7 as ports then PB0 to PB7 as port B. So, there are 4 such ports PA, PB, PC and PD and uh, so there are timers like T0 and T1 there are 2 timers then we have got analog inputs uh, 0, 1 so for this analog input. Then there are some special lines that you can see here is the MOSI that um, master out slave in and uh, MOSI, MISO then this SS bar and SCK so these are used for um, uh, spe some special uh, um, communication serial communication which is known as SPI or serial peripheral interface. So, it is like this. Uh, so, this uh, serial peripheral interface or SPI so it is a very simple type of interface where uh, between the processor and uh, device so uh, the, so there is a master and there is a slave ok. So, this is the master and this is the slave and the data transfer is very simple both the master and slave they have got one register this is they are called SPI register. So, this is the suppose this is the SPI register in the master. So, this is an 8 bit register and slave also has got one SPI register which is 8 bit fine. Now, there is a pin which is master out slave in or M O S I master out slave in there is another pin master in slave out ok master in slave out. So, from the master side we can say it like so, so you can see it like this. So, then there is another pin which is uh, slave clock. So, this is slave clock and there is another pin which is slave select. So, this is the configuration. Now, when the data transfer will take place, so this is a synchronous transmission and this whole thing is controlled by this, uh, the, this uh, slave clock. So, the master will be giving the clock and the transfer will be based on that and the transfer that happens is basically an exchange. So, this transfer that takes place is an exchange of these two register values. So, there is no direction of transmission. So, it is always bidirectional. So, this SPI value will be going through this MOSI line to this one and this value will be coming through this MISO line to this one. So, that way there is an exchange between the two content. So, this is a very simple type of protocol and many of the uh, uh, embedded uh, systems they use this type of protocol because the interfacing devices that we are going to connect. So, they are going to be very simple and they do not support uh, say very complex communication protocol and uh, so this uh, serial peripheral interface or SPI. So, this is used. So, it is a very simple protocol ok. So, uh, you can always support in a microcontroller this type of protocol, but in Atmega series you see you have got uh, this thing directly uh, implemented. So, you have got this uh, slave select line, the MOSI, MISO and the slave clock. So, they are useful for uh, doing this uh, uh, for SPI type of interface. 
Another interesting interface that we have here is via this SDA and SCL line. So, this is uh, the, uh, the this is, these are for, for another type of uh, interface which is known as I, I square C interface. Okay. So, they are for this uh, I square C interface inter integrated circuit. Interintegrated circuit. They have got the name IIC or I square C or I2C. There are various names. Okay. So, here what happens is that we have got two buses, one is called uh, this uh, SDA and another is called SCL. And then we have got these devices that will hang from these buses. So, every device has got one connection to SDL and one connection to SCL. So, it will have like this. Now, when the communication takes place, so uh, this, uh, this master, so if this is a master and these are two devices, then this master will uh, put this uh, device address onto the bus and the device which will be, which will have that address. So, this will be uh, sensing that value and then it will be uh, the next byte that will follow. So, this, this is a serial transmission. So, next byte that will follow. So, that will be uh, taken by that device. So, this is a two wire interface where we have got only two lines SDA and SCL and it is a serial transmission. Okay. This is a serial transmission, but we can have multiple bus masters and multiple, multiple bus uh, slaves that we can connect to this system. So, this may be master 1, this may be master 2. And there is a protocol by which uh, it will detect that there, there is a collision or something like that. So, there are various such things are there, various uh, protocols are there in I square C, but still it is much, much simpler compared to a uh, full fledged uh, uh, communication protocol where I will have a number of devices hanging from buses, there will be bus arbiter and all those. So, those things are not there. So, this SPI and I square C, they are two very simple interfacing standards and in uh, in Atmega series of processors, so you will find them. Okay. So, they are useful, so for connecting some simple device to the system. So, the many of these uh, devices like say real time clock module, then this uh, ADC modules, then this, um, uh, this uh, uh, small ch memory chips. So, they are having this SPI or I square C interfaces. Okay, so, so the, um, that way the design becomes simpler for those uh, those process those uh, 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 chips. Or if you are designing a sensor, maybe we do not uh, bother much to have a very good interface with that sensor, and that sensor may not have, say, for example, USB interface or RS232C interface like that. So it can simply support one of these uh, interfaces, and uh, this that device will be able to talk to this uh, at mega series processor. So, we have got this timer counter 0, it is 8 bit up counter, it counts from 0 to 255 and then loops down to loops back to 0. The clock source can be internal or external. So, when it is a clock source, so it is a timer, when it is a clock source is external, so this is a counter. There can be a pre-scaler, so you can uh, initialize this timer value to some uh, initial value, so that way it can start counting from there. Then output is captured through OC0 that is PB3 pin 4. So, if there is an uh, output overflow, so that will be captured by that. It will also generate an interrupt on overflow. So, whenever it, it makes a transition from 255 to 0, it can, it can, you can make it to trigger an interrupt. Okay. So, you can make it to trigger an interrupt just like in 8051 we have seen that the timers can be programmed uh, so that the interrupt occurs. It, uh, so, here also the same thing, you can make the interrupt to occur. So, OCO is the output compare, uh, so this is the uh, output compare match output. So, it, 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 when the output matches, whenever this TCNT0 will match with OCR0. So, uh, there, there is the output compare register 0. So, there will be uh, this value will be saved there and whenever this count value becomes equal to this uh, OCR0 uh, register value, output compare register value, then this output compare match will become enabled. So, this can be uh, used to serve as an external output for the timer counter uh, compare match. So, 
internally uh, this is uh, the timer is doing something and if you want to detect some particular uh, uh, point uh, of occurrence you can put the uh, desired time values in the OCR register and then you can observe this uh, OC or this uh, OCO pin ok. So, with the OCO pin uh, say whenever this value the timer value will match with that OCR 0 register then this uh, counter timer counter 0 compare match. So, that output will be made high. So, to the external world you will know that uh, there is a match in the current value. So, we can use it for triggering many other operation maybe in some uh, other devices. So, we can trigger some operation. So, it can be used for that purpose. Then we have got uh, another timer which is uh, a VR counter timer counter 1 is a 16 bit timer. So, there are dual comparators A and B. So, for output comparison, it is a up counter, it provides uh, an over interrupts on overflow, it compared with uh, A, B. So, if the comparison matches, then also an interrupt will be generated. And this input capture of external event on ICP pin. So, there is an ICP pin. So, if there is uh, some external value that will that uh, you can want to match, so you can external event can be taken through the ICP pin when it is working as a counter mode can also you can you can also be used to act as 8 9 or 10 bit pulse width modulation uh, uh, applications so if you want to modulate some pulse width for transmission so you can uh, use it in up down counter mode in 8 9 or 10 bit pulse width modulation the input uh, capture unit of timer or counter it will capture external events and give them a time stamp indicating the time of occurrence so, this is one important uh, facility that it has. So, you can get the time stamp of occurrences of the events. The external signal indicating an event or multiple events can be applied via this ICP 1 pin or via the analog comparator unit. So, that way you can give these external signals to the AVR microcontrollers. The time stamps that we have got, so we can be we can use it for calculating frequency, duty cycle or other features of the signal. So, you, it is like this some signal is coming. So, we are trying to uh, capture some feature of the signal. So, at a different so as the values of the signals are changing. So, we capture the values of the signal and from the timer counter uh, 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 module. So, we can get the corresponding time stamps. So, later on we can use it for uh, getting the frequency or some uh, other features of the uh, of the signal. So, that can be used for some other application some for signal processing application. Alternatively, so they can also be used for creating a time log like say if you are if there is a telephone call. So, how long the call has taken place. So, you can uh, start when the call is starting. So, you can you can have the time stamp stored and then when the call is ending you can again get the time stamp. So, internally this uh, timer is running. So, you can get the time stamps from there and you can uh, get an information about uh, the duration of the call. So, this way this time stamping feature can be uti utilized in different applications. Then in timer 1, so it has got two output compares OCR 1 A and B. So, they are 16 bit registers ok. So, when the value of this OCR 1 A or 1 B matches with timer 1. So, user defined action can take place on the OCA or OC 1 A or 1 B pin like we can set or reset or uh, invert the pin. So, you see this is a very important interesting thing like if uh, whenever this uh, matching will occur. So, you can program the system so that that p particular pin will get set or reset. Maybe this is connected to some LED that LED will glow that uh, that match has occurred something like that. And interrupt can also be triggered and timer 1 can be cleared to 0. So, either you can so in other processors what was happening is that for in for example, in 8051. So, if a timer starts and when the timer overflows then uh, it gives an interrupt and that way. But in between time values, so if you want to get some stamping like if, if you want to get some notification in between that is not going to happen. So, you have to stop the timer with that time value then only you can get that notification. But in this case uh, it is uh, more flexible because I can have this uh, timer uh, timers programmed in such a fashion that when that uh, time value uh, reaches a particular uh, value set in the OCR register. So, we can initiate some action like uh, setting clearing bits or setting an interrupt or, uh, or stopping the timer by resetting it to 0. 
once the setup the output will compare uh, the, the output co uh, compares operate continually without software intervention. So, you just have to tell that I need to compare this. So, once that is done, so it will be continually doing. So, the precise recurring timing. So, this is this can be used for uh, recurring timing. So, when the event is occurring again, so you can find out frequency or tone generation for sound effects at some particular frequency you want to uh, generate some uh, tones. Okay. So, uh, for different uh, I may have a number of uh, um, sound uh, so different number of different sounds to be produced and each of them will occur at some different periodic boundaries. Okay. So, that way I can do that by controlling this uh, output capture part uh, and then the digital signal generation like infrared communication then software driven serial ports. So, the wherever we need some sort of periodic thing to occur continually like in 8051 we had uh, had that uh, um, mode 2 where it was a auto reload type of uh, operation, but here it is uh, um, not required. So, here it is you can do this OCR and this output uh, timer 1 for doing this operation.